Dr. Benjamin Hardy is an organisational psychologist that wrote a lot of best-selling books such as Personalities and Permanent, The Gap and the Gain and so forth. And today we're going to go over five things he thinks that we need to learn to live a successful life. So the first one would be progress over perfection. When you try doing something, instead of trying to make it perfect, just try to get it done. Don't let perfect or trying to be perfect get in the way of something being great. Make sure that you don't try to get something 100% perfect, but try to get it like about 80%. This rule is very good against procrastination because procrastinators often procrastinate because they feel that what they're doing has to be perfect. And if your goal is simply to get it done, then you haven't got this high expectation of yourself and therefore it's much easier to start. If you see everything as a first draft and not as a masterpiece, then it will be easier for you to start. And what's also interesting, you might now think with a procrastination thing that will lead to me getting things done, but whatever I'm doing then won't be high quality. However, quantity often leads to quality. For example, there was one study on people who were trying to make pot and these participants were split into two groups. One group was told to make as many pots as possible, whereas the other group was told to try and make the perfect pot. And then what they did is they compared the best pot of those two groups to see in which group the best pot actually was made. And guess what? It wasn't in the quality group, it wasn't in the group that tried to get it perfect. It was in the group in which they were focusing on making the most pots. But procrastination isn't the only problem that comes along with perfectionism. Perfectionism causes loads more of negative consequences that are also way more serious, such as a lack of self-esteem, depression, and in very many cases, suicidal ideation. And then the second thing, if you want to make sure that you're successful and happy at the same time and that you don't, if you become successful at all, end up being one of these miserable successful people, then what you want to make sure is that you stop measuring the gap and you start measuring the gain. The problem is comparing our current self with our ideal self with what we would like to be like. Which is why James Clear's big thing wasn't having goals but having focusing on systems instead only concentrating on the process and ignoring the results. However, the problem is that you want to make sure that you kind of see whether the method you're using actually works by looking at your results. Because how will you know if you're heading in the right direction if you don't even know what your destination is? So how can we at the same time measure our results without comparing ourselves to who we'd like to be? Dr. Benjamin Hardy's answer to this question is that instead of measuring the gap between where you are now and where you want to be, to basically measure the gain where you used to be and how far you've come since then, how much progress you've made since then. This is a great way to measure your results so be able to actually be successful and achieve your goals but at the same time not sacrifice your happiness and even feel better about yourself. And then the third lesson would be that you want to make sure that your passions are harmonious passions and not obsessive passions. Basically the difference is that harmonious passions are basically when we want something, whereas obsessive passions is when we feel like we need something, like we desperately need something, because these make us very unhappy. They make us very anxious when we feel like we desperately want something. It, it makes us very afraid of losing it. Which is why in relationships you always want to make sure that you are the buyer, not the seller. So basically the seller is the person who's desperately trying to sell their product. Whereas the buyer is the person who has the choice between whether he actually wants to buy that or not. And you always want to make sure that you are the one who can take the offer or not, that you don't feel like you have this obsessive passion, that you desperately have to get the results you want. And this is how addicts feel. They know very well that they're going to be negative consequences, 
but they feel that they need that so desperately that they're willing to do that although they know that they shouldn't. So it's usually our obsessive passions that are very short term and that lead to negative consequences. Whereas harmonious passion is rather a long term game and usually leads to good consequences. And then the fourth thing we should know is that personality isn't permanent. We actually change much more than we think we do. Thinking that you're going to stay the same as you are now in future is so common that there's even a psychological term for this. It's called the end of history effect. In a study, they divided participants into two groups. One was supposed to predict how much they were going to change within the next 10 years. And the second group was told to describe how much they've changed within the last 10 years. And it turned out that those who described how much they changed within the last 10 years said they changed much more than the people who were supposed to predict their future said that they would change within the next 10 years. And this isn't only the case with personality, this is also the case with our preferences. In another study, participants were asked to say how much they were willing to pay to go to a concert of musicians they liked 10 years ago. And another group was supposed to say how much they would pay to go to a concert of the musicians they like a lot now in 10 years time. Now, if people were logical, then the price should be more or less the same among these two groups. However, it turned out that the people were willing to pay more for the musicians they liked now to see their concert in 10 years then the people were asked how much they would pay to see musicians they liked 10 years ago at that point in time. And then the fifth one would be that willpower doesn't really work that well. Psychologist Roy Baumeister made lots and lots of studies on decision fatigue. Basically that the more decisions you make, the more willpower you use. And this is the case because our prefrontal cortex, which is there for decision making, takes up a lot of energy and therefore the more willpower we use the less energy we have throughout the day and in the end there's no energy really left for the prefrontal cortex to make good decisions anymore which is why instead you should make sure that you change your environment in a way that it makes it easier to behave the way you want to so for example if you want to quit sugar basically not having any sweet stuff around in your house and so forth. Now if you want to know more about how to build good habits by another psychologist, you can watch this video here.